What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Alpha Male. Let's get straight into it. Most men, most men will only experience unconditional love from their mothers, and some of us don't even get that. Mm -hmm. Most of us have never even felt appreciation or respect without conditions or hidden intentions. We don't know what it sounds like to hear, I see you, and I'm proud of you, I'm glad you're here. You really make a difference, yet the expectation is to constantly be displaying the strength and love that the world is hesitant in conveying. We're expected to have a thick skin but get judged if it turns to a hard shell. The first step in being a man is ignoring the hunger. Cause yes, boy, you're gonna be starving. Starved of attention, starved of affirmation, starved of love, starved of being told that you are enough. Step two in being a man is comfortability with replaceability. You are only as good as you are useful. You are only as valuable as you are needed by others. Mm -hmm. Should there ever come a day, boy, where you fail to provide everybody with a smiling face, then do not be surprised when they say all men do is take up space. Mm. Preach. Men fumble the women that ask for things that cost nothing, like time, attention, affection, honesty, communication. Like that may seem like it's too much to ask, but in a world full of begging females today, if you have that type of female that's asking for things that money cannot buy and you fumble her, you will regret it. You will miss her. I promise you will. I, I don't agree it with that. A lot of women just want to suck up all of your time and they don't want to suck up the right things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> the thing is, you can go back and forth with a woman all the time, do the mental gymnastics and the, the sign language, the shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. And a lot of times, just a waste of time. If you don't provide me peace, then you're a piece of the problem. It seem like too much now, but when she's not there to ask for it anymore, you will see. I promise. Mm, no. I absolutely love when these kind of black males say stuff like, oh, we don't date black women. No, hun, black women don't date you. Because let's just keep uh, it up. False. Men control access to relationships. Women control access to sex. So if you're if you're not getting cuffed, it's because a man doesn't want to cuff you. Fuck, like, let's just keep it honest. No, keep it about The black males that act like they don't date black women are just the black males that black women have passed up on for years because something is wrong with them. I love it. People they, meet people. Just the pure lack of accountability. Nowadays, being a single gal in a single world, where do I go if I don't want to go on dating apps? Like, I don't like dating apps. I've had them. Go I've to church. Dude, here's, here's like two easy ways. My man's got his legs hanging off. Two easy ways you can meet somebody that's single. Go to church. I know a lot of you guys are like, I don't want to go to church. Cool, whatever. Frequent a place where people your age or people you would like to meet would go. For example, a coffee shop. Go to a coffee shop every day at the same time. And you're like, every day? That's a lot, Levi. I don't know if I can be that consistent, dude. Okay, well then, if you don't want a girlfriend or don't want a significant other, that's cool. But I'm just telling you, this is what works. Go to a place, frequent it consistently. Go there, and then strike up casual conversations with people. Dress well, look nice, get a nice haircut, be in good shape, dress well, smell good. You always got to wear cologne because the first the first hole that you penetrate with any woman is her nostrils. <laughs> so if you smell good, a girl's going to be like, wow, you smell good, and more than likely she'll be able to talk to you. Get good at striking up small talk. Things that are just situational. Did you see that fight outside? Oh my god, what happened? Ah, it was just it was like it was like two birds fighting over a, a worm. Did you see that? She's like, oh my god, it's so stupid, but it gets you a get you your foot in the door. Um, but it's these little things that you have to do. You want a woman, you want a significant other, you have to frequent places where other singles would be. Tried them. I get disappointed, I get discouraged. It let's be honest, let's be real dating apps. If you're going to think this person is attractive, you're probably going to swipe yes. And if you don't find them attractive, you're going to swipe no. But sometimes people just aren't photogenic. They just don't present themselves well through photos. That's why I just feel like it's so much better to meet people in person. Also, just like with having dating apps, like it just feels forced. And I don't want it to feel forced. I want to like go out in public, meet someone like in the wild, both just having to bump into each other. And you're like, and then, you know. It's like this Disney fantasy. It's never going to happen. You're not going to meet on the bread aisle at Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh my God, do you like wheat? Oh, I love rye. Uh, it doesn't happen. Sparks fly. That I just want to know where. Like, where do the single men go? Where are you going? Where are you hanging out? Like, if you're in the garage, like, come out. Like, are you at the lake? Are you snowmobiling? Are you fishing? It's wintertime. What are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. How am I this amazing? Like, and who told you that? 
Shots fired! Who told you you're amazing? You're so amazing, I'm gonna go ahead and skip. I'm not interacting with males. I know the modern dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt physically. Have you ever been the victim of a personal injury case? Every year as an image consultant, I meet so many different types of clients, and a lot of them are recovering from injuries or accidents, ranging from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was extremely surprised to see how many people lost their personal injury cases, which is why I'm here to talk about Morgan & Morgan. America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they have won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they will fight for the money you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan secured verdicts of $12 million in Florida and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is it's all free unless you win your case. If you have also been a victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi. Found in the description below where you can start your free claim today. And she was like, well, like, are you, like, trying to, like, go out of your way to meet people? I'm like, no, because people are fucking telling me that it comes when you least expect it. So here I am, like, trying to convince myself I don't want it and I'm just not expecting it so I can get You're it. You're in a freaking strawberry moo moo. <laughs> what, it, what is that fit? And it's not happening. But then even when I go out of my way to, like, go on dating apps, it just never works because these people that I'm meeting aren't my cup of tea, are not wanting what I want. They just want I a casual. These are mushrooms thing and like as as someone who's never been in any kind of romantic entanglement i'm my first my first relationship is not going to be a fucking casual relationship and yeah sky so high standards absolutely delusional mid at best Shots fired! i'm sorry honey but it's just not going to happen for you it's not gonna happen for you him simply because you are not giving him any effort a lot of guys are socially awkward. I think I think you're a bit ignorant to like the average guy's experience. Consider this, right? The average guy today, his granddad had to put in a quarter of the work to mm -hmm. get the kind of woman that is four times as amazing as the woman he's attracted. Oh, you're are you talking? You're talking like about his gra like his grandmother was an amazing woman and a, and a very very feminine natural woman, and his granddad yeah. really didn't have to do the kind of work he has to do right now Yo. as a young man in the Western world. So so Thanks. you're talking about hoflation. Yes, it's hopefully. Hopeflation, so modern men have to work five times harder than their grandfathers did for women 20 times worse than what their grandmothers did. because these women can't cook, they can't clean, they really can't do anything around the house. They're not domesticated at all. All they know how to do is things in the bedroom. Single, and you are in the dating marketplace at that time, when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you're- 41, 42, 43, 40. <laughs> Seven, four, I hate it when people list numbers like that. Still on the hunt for that man, and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is. 15, 17. You are going to be panicked because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, in general who have that youthfulness to them who have that estrogen progesterone whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young it's there and you're losing it and you become hyper aware of that and that is why women begin to panic you know what i want to talk about you guys so i live in new york specifically brooklyn and i'd be outside you know enjoying summer as i should and i've been going to the block parties all of that good stuff you know the day parties has been a time but the problem is the men just stare at you. They just stare at you the whole time. I'm sorry, but guys, do you like bald women? I'm gonna keep it a buck. It's just not, it's not my style, bro. I like long natural hair. They don't approach you. They don't wanna get to know you. They don't wanna, oh, do you wanna drink? It's just a staring contest the whole time. Well, ladies, I you wanted equality. Now it's your turn to, you know, approach men. That's how it goes. We, and we don't feel bad for you because this is what you wanted. Loki, do you want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Oh, look, equality. It's what we wanted this entire time. I'm going to complain about it. Come on. Because if I could explain to anybody how lonely pregnancy is. Oh. Single mom. You I, I can't put it into words. You didn't I'm just so like, frustrated. 
Some so that's ex- Brandon Jamal. That's the guy I have. That's the sound bite that I have. Brandon Jamal, man. Shout out to him for even making that song. It was much needed for this this generation. Something that we've been needing. Um, there's too many single moms out there, man. And I was raised by one, man. It's crazy. Women, the state of men. You know how you say it ain't no good men? Okay, that's fine. It's your fault, though. <laughs> Yeah, I said it because you keep giving them passes when they ain't worth nothing. So if you marry them and they ain't worth nothing, why would they become anything better? You, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. They didn't have a job, you slept with them. That's your fault. They weren't taking care of their other children and you thought they were going to take care of your babe? That's your, yeah, yeah, I get it. They're not going to become. Abilities of plague though better if you give them your I ain't just you're good why become better when I'm already getting what I want hear me in Hollywood right now the writers have went on strike because they ain't getting paid you know what we need we need women to go on y'all ain't, hey, hey. no if you ain't got a job if you ain't consistent if you ain't got character you ain't I mean, the man's preaching. This is a cut video where they try and guess each other's IQ. And this girl judges this guy for having a low IQ. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then six. It has nothing to do with your background. I don't think you really have the highest EQ. Bro, from where your bangs start, I almost bet you got the lowest IQ. Bangs starting over here. Aren't bangs supposed to be like right here? You out of all of us not taking in other people's point of views and compiling results but really just came down to his body language his demeanor the way he- <laughs> the most correct person in the room is usually the one that's the dumbest he carried himself the way he acted towards the group me i don't know Can you ever <laughs> argue with a stupid person it's brutal a cancer biology scientist i work in a biotech company we make 19 testing kit number three will be tyler and number four would be Shada. Number five is Sean, and number six is <laughs> It reminds me of this famous quote, never confuse education with intelligence. Mm-hmm. You can have a PhD and still, still be, an, be idiot. an idiot. Yeah. Press facts. Exactly. Girls are not sweet. Whoever told you that, don't be naive. As much as, you know, we bash men, cause like we have this thing where it's in fashion to bash men and be like, men are all assholes. They will lie to you, they'll play you. They'll manipulate situations. They will portray a certain image. They will suck you in to a, a reality that doesn't even exist. Huh? There are certain men that women like and adore and admire publicly, and there are certain men that women like and adore and admire privately. Now, it's very important to distinguish these two or differentiate between these two, and here's why. There are certain nice guy personality traits, and you're going to see these types of mannerisms with guys specifically that do well on social media. They are the guys who are smiling ear to ear, showing lots of personality, and these oftentimes are the guys who women will comment a bunch of stuff underneath their posts and whatnot. But here's what I can tell you. There's a polar opposite type of guy that women like privately, and here's what I mean. Oftentimes the guy that she's actually sleeping with, she might not even follow on social media. The guy who her heart is completely invested in, she might not even want to see what he's up to because it creates different thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Or on top of that, because she has such a strong admiration or love for him, she might even be worried about judgment as to how that's perceived with her other friends or her family or anybody who knows her if she were to admit that she actually likes that guy. Sad truth is that there's a lot of bad boy traits that women gravitate towards that they don't even talk about because these are the types of men that they like privately, not publicly. Man, it's preaching. I am only attracted to wealthy, generous men who provide for me. That's all I've ever dated in my entire life. It's all I ever would. I'd rather be single than split bills. She's a runner. She's a track star. Lord have mercy. What are you bringing to the table besides your body to these men who are taking care of you? You'd have to ask them. I'm asking you. I don't know. You'd have to ask them. They're the ones who want to date me. So from your perspective, what do you bring? Me. So what does that mean? This is an older woman, dude. Stupid. This is so sad. I mean, you'd have to ask someone who loves me why they love me. I'm not a mind reader. No, I'm not asking you to be a mind reader. I'm just asking, you're, you are on the other end of this relationship. I assume you know what you're bringing to the table of the relationship, right? If somebody loves me, then and I love them, then I keep dating them. I don't really worry about the why. So you don't know what you bring to the Stupid. God. The table? I don't really give it that much consideration. 
clearly. Essentially, you're just giving them checks and then in exchange are giving you money. And that's it. Hopefully or not. Just, well, then what else is there? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Jesus. Traditionally. This is an older woman, too. This is probably somebody's mama or aunt. Can't even answer a basic question like that. That is so sad. Me? It's always just me. I'm me. I'm so great. God, this is modern women, bro. You can take the woman out the streets, but you can't take the streets out the woman, brother man. I bet I don't think we're gonna be able to go out to eat no more. Why not? Because I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? My pockets is looking a little bit low right now. I had a lot of stuff to pay for, so I ain't got no money on me to take you out to eat. Well, Ray, I mean, that's not a problem. We can go. We can still go. I got you. Wait. I'm saying though, but I don't have no money to pay for the food. I'm gonna pay for it, baby. You always pay for the food. Come on, let's go. Bro, I saw a post the other day that was like, you really wanna see, Loki, go to your place. They gotta see you, bro. They gotta see you. Go to your place. Place, I don't have any more food. Scrounger. You wanna see your woman's true colors? Tell her that in 30 days, you're gonna lose your job. Say, honey, I just gotta notice, I'm about to lose my job in 30 days. It's about to be a wrap. I'm gonna need you to help with bills. I'm gonna need you to help with, you know, finances. And this may be just a girl you're dating, like casually. Do that and see the way she acts. If she treats you like trash, she doesn't step up to actually help you, more than likely she's not on your team. She's just looking to get something out of you. This is why I say men love unconditionally and women love conditionally. Women love men on the condition that they provide them with something. Men, we love unconditionally. Let me know in the chat. Do you guys, expect a woman to pay for things do you expect a woman to buy you stuff do you expect a woman to provide anything monetarily to your lifestyle your bills or anything like that most men i would say no but do women expect that absolutely yes why haven't you paid for my meal my nails my this my that you should pay for all you know, like we're we're expected to provide something which means that we're loved on a condition that we give them something but we love unconditionally that's why i say men are the true romantics Women aren't true romantics. Women are shallow. Um, and I think the real women are the ones that understand it. I don't know if I'm just making this up or if it's just my intuition, but I have this feeling that the guy I'm seeing at the moment, he's getting off and having his little ego stroked by the fact that his housemates have heard us. I don't know if no. it's legit or not, but there's just some... Things that I'm just definitely Australian and a hundred percent, honey. He is flexing the fact that he is beating your cheeks and everybody can hear you moaning. <laughs> That's a hundred percent. He's flexing on his home, his homies. Questioning, like he never tells me if there's other people in the house, and he never tells me to keep it down or anything like that. And when I ask other people here, he'll say no at times, but then there are. And then when we go downstairs, they kind of make these weird eye contact with each other and they're like, hmm. And it's a very boy club because it's a bunch of dudes living in a house together. And he seems insecure, like it seems like it's like an ego thing, but I'm not too sure, but it's weird and I don't know. Bro, he's just clapping your cheeks and he's flexing on his boys. So I just watched a video. Chat, let me know if you've done that. I've definitely done that. The other girl where she said that she got very humbled because she went on a date with a guy and she said on the tech meshes he was very flirty. In real life, when they met, he wasn't as She looks like if um, if an acorn was a human. Shots fired! Would, and that the date went really well. She said they were out for two hours, they went for a walk, they went for a coffee, and then she said she bluntly just asked him, why is he more flirty on text messages than he is in real life? He then humbles her and he says, I think you're a very pretty girl. However, you do look a little bit different than your pictures. <laughs> That's my opinion now. But I have enjoyed our date, but I do think it's more of a friendly vibe. All the comments are roasting this guy, being like, oh, but he's a warm red flag. You dodged a bullet there and all this, right? I don't see anything wrong in what he's done. Facts. He's been very polite about it. He's went on the date with you and you've asked him a question and he's told you the truth but because it's an answer that you don't want to hear you then come to TikTok for loads of people to then roost this guy when fair enough you haven't put a picture of him up thank god but he's done the right yeah, thing yeah he did the right thing he was transparent with her and shout out to her she's based i'll take back what i said she's not an acorn um let's go to this next girl here what do we got got the modern women on this one are he's shifting roles within the relationship in Germany, if you did not know, it's really common here for when two people go on a first date that they split the bill. So like 
the woman pays her portion and a man pays his portion. Love that. And the other thing about that is that on the date, you are only going to pay for what you consume. I so let's say it. I got a margarita for $8 and he just got water, you know, free water. When the total bill comes out, it's very common for the man or whoever to be like, hey, I didn't drink that margarita. So I'm not, I don't want to split it like that. I want to pay for what I ate. So I went to the internet to try to figure out why is it like this, you know, because th this is not like it how it is in America. It's very different. And apparently I can't read because I can't come to understand why. Are you telling me you asked me out on a date? You told me I was beautiful. You invited me out to dinner. You're telling me how much you want to marry me and you want me to have your first children. And you Bro, tell me ladies, <laughs> this is why y'all wear makeup and men lie. We're going to tell you the things that you want to hear so we can sleep with you. Are you stupid? When the waiter comes out with the bill, after you said you was going to build a house with your own bare hands for me, and the waiter comes out with the bill, and you look at me like this. So are you going to pay? What? Bro, this is what ladies don't get. This is why women lie, or men lie, and women wear makeup. We know what it takes to beat the cheeks. We're going to tell you all of those things. Yeah, we'll build you a house with our bare hands. <laughs> You know, we want you, we want to marry you. I see a p potential with you because we understand that you need to be, you're, you're hypergamous enough where you see us as men and you're like, well, if I, if I, I'm only going to sleep with them if I see the potential in a relationship. Most of the time, that's what women want. I'm not going to say all the time. Women can go out there and get their rocks off too. But most of the time when they see a guy, they're like, oh, I could see him being the potential boyfriend of mine. They usually don't just go out and sleep with guys out of pity, sympathy. Guys will go out there and get what they get because it's rough out there in those streets, man. She's a runner. She's a track star. Sometimes it's tough. You begin those dry spells. Chat, let me know in the comments. Have you ever had a homie that had such a dry spell that he just turned into like the Wicked Witch of the West and he was just bitter up and down? I remember having a homie in college being like, bro, you need some play. Like, for you need to go out there and get some cat because you are insufferable. You're always whining and complaining. Like, bro, go get you a girl. I don't even care what it is. Go get you a swamp rat, back aisles of Walmart. You need to blow somebody's back out because you're giving me a headache right now. I've been there. Every guy I feel like's been there. I remember when I started, like, just started dating, I was like, man, it's tough when you got a dry spell. Phone be dry as the Sahara. Phone be dry as sandpaper. It'd be dry as a cat's tongue. You'd be like, why is it? Ain't nobody hitting me up. I remember waking up, no text messages. Nobody hollering at me. Nobody, nobody replying. Nobody liking nothing. I was like, man, this really does suck. But the thing is, ladies, you are born with your value. And us as men, we have to go out there and create it. That's why we don't feel bad for these older women that get in the dating market. And they're like, where are all the good men? Well, you had your shot and you blew it. You absolutely blew it. You had so much time when you were younger to go out there and procure a man of value. But what did you do? You wanted to be in the streets. She's a runner. She's a track star. You wanted to be in the streets. And us as men, while we're out there creating value and going out there learning skill sets, making money, you're out there just being willy-nilly thinking you'll be this hot forever, which that is not the reality. That's not the case. Like I always say, men age like fine wine and women age like yogurt left out in Texas in July. <laughs> Just, you guys don't age as well. But that's why we don't feel bad for these post-wall women that are out there like, where are all the men? Well, you had your chance. You're living the reality that us as men have had to live. So here's the best thing I can tell you guys. Go out there and just create as much value. Stop chasing women, because when you chase them, they run. Start attracting them. Build your own value. Build it, and they will come. It's the same thing with money. You chase money, the money runs. You attract money, money comes. You need to create it. Create value and other people will find you. Why do you think there's so many gurus and so many YouTubers and things like that? It's like, apparently these people are out there creating some sort of value. I'm sure that you guys watch my channel for some reason. I don't know why, because I just got a big forehead. Shots fired! And I'm pretty stupid. Stupid. I'm not very smart, but there's probably a reason that you guys watch the channel. Probably because you get some sort of value out of it. That's why, we, that's why I consume certain content, because I get value out of it. So go out there, learn what you're good at, double down on your skill sets, and then create value from that. Learn how to monetize it and make it into a business. A lot of people don't do that, though. A lot of people just work a job, which is cool. Working a job's fine, but I always think it's good to work for yourself. You get that freedom. Start thinking about money as freedom units. The more freedom units you have, the less you have to answer to someone else. Multiple streams of income, whether it's real estate, investing in a Roth IRA, stocks, bonds doing YouTube, being a content creator. The attention economy is crazy right now. You can go out there and start documenting your regular everyday life and people want to follow you. It's crazy, but you have to start documenting it. 
I have buddies that want to like start a podcast. They want to start doing this, but they're all talk and talk is often the substitute for action. Remember that one. That'll be the quote for today's episode. Talk is often the substitute for action. Let's get into the, uh, let's get into the Reddit real quick. This one is from, uh, D Swenson. Shout out to you. Cam girl makes simp cut off. Oh my God. Cut off their balls. Skip to 29 seconds and end at 115. Okay. Yep. Just checking. Uh, 29 seconds and end at 115. Makes him cut off his sack -a -lack? Good lord. Like, we're in like private chat where he's paying by like the minute, but like he offered like 3,000. He already tipped it. And he was like, I just want you to push me to cut off one of my balls. And he already had like a metal clamp thing. So then I was like, well, if you already spent, you already tipped me $3,000. And. You're probably just gonna tell the other girl. Excuse if me. If I say no, you're gonna have someone else do it. So, so then I was like, "Yep." And he did it. I said, I did. "Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going." Yep. Go. Oh, God. Blop. Wait, do that again. Keep going. Keep clipping. Good job. Good boy. Blop. <laughs> and then went blop on the floor. Damn. The oh my God. Just thinking about that makes my nuts hurt, dude. <laughs> this poor guy. But this is, dude, this is why we gotta end the simp pandemic, bro. All these men out there simping for women. Dude, we could end this whole corn industry and all the OF stuff that's going on right now if men stopped paying for it and stopped providing these women with a lifestyle that they really can't afford and they really shouldn't even be earning. Like, who's buying all this OF? It's men. It's lonely men. This is why I preach, like, guys. Go out there and get dirty. Here's the three ways to unbuck your life. It's super simple. Number one, go listen to As A Man Thinketh on Spotify by James Allen. Number two, get in the gym. Number three, eat a whole food diet. You want a bonus one? Consume better content. Stop consuming and stop creating. I think this is the problem with the younger generation, especially the Gen Z kids, the iPad kids, is that they're given iPads so early that they never really get to form their imagination. When you give kids things to consume, they never have to go out there and create. When I was younger, and chat, let me know when you were younger. When I was younger, we were so creative. We were outside playing imaginary imaginary friends and you know, go doing this and that, but like, kids aren't doing that these days. There's no creation. It's all consumption. It's that capitalistic nature, which is probably what they want. Um, they don't want creatives. They don't want leaders. They want followers. They want kids working. They don't want kids creating businesses. So it's crazy to me. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? He's got his paws on the floor. He's ready. It's about to be lunchtime. You want some foodles? Oh, he does the head tilt when he wants foodles. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. It makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I really do appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.